The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. The line between fact and fancy is often a very thin one. The border that separates illusion from reality can be very narrow. Just as the distance from sanity to madness and back again to sanity can be a very short one. And do we always know where the real world leaves off and the dream begins? Sometime the spirit of a man die before he, his body die. When his soul, his spirit, die before the rest of him, then the good Marco is his special sad. When that happened, melody of the drum is his special sad too, like now. Listen. To the song of lamentation. Death has walked among my people. It is why this island is called the Island of the Lost. mystery drama, Island of the Lost, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Arnold Moss and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Ever had a tall, frosty glass of amplitude? Well, if your beer is Budweiser, you've had it often. Amplitude is a fancy word for the entire taste phenomenon, the total experience of flavor. Next time you take a healthy swallow of Bud, watch what happens. Think about the sensations you're experiencing. Notice how the flavor of Bud comes on nice and easy. Not too strong, not too quick, just right. Notice the clean, crisp togetherness of Bud's taste. Everything in perfect balance, with no single element jumping out at you. And there'll be no aftertaste either, no hanging on. And you'll be refreshed and ready for another glassful. Actually, butt drinkers have been experiencing amplitude for years, but they never phrase it that way. They just say, Budweiser, and that says it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. And now, another episode of Kava Clutches, the heartwarming story of two coffee lovers with a lot in common. Gee, Brenda Sue, we both love ping pong and fig news. Yes, Arnie. So I thought we might... Yes, Arnie. ...try a Kava coffee black. <laughs> when it's time for coffee, try a cup of Kava instant coffee. Kava's 90% acid neutralized, so it's less bitter even when you drink it black. Can you spell kava? Sure. K. Ra. A. Ra. V. Ra. A. Ra. Have a cup of kava. What a cup of coffee. You know, we even like the same quiz shows. Oh, oh. Tune in next time. But until then, remember K-A-V-A. Kava. The only 90% acid neutralized coffee on or in the market. <laughs> The great, smooth-tasting instant coffee with the really ugly label, Kava, from Borden. Dreams have breath and tears and tortures and the touch of joy. They leave a weight upon our waking thoughts. They take a weight from off our waking troubles. They can divide our being. They can become for us the heralds of eternity. For Tony Bridges, it began in the office of his eye doctor. Tilt your head back just a trifle more, Tony. So, very good. Now hold still, please. 
You know, every time you put that head mirror on to examine my eyes... There's no talking, my friend. Oh, you're the doctor. One moment more. Mm-hmm. Yes, so Finished. You are saying, Tony? Oh, nothing important. It's only that every time you examine my eyes and put that big mirror on around your head with the hole in the middle, it always makes me think of one of those uh, science fiction movies with, uh, you know, Boris Karloff. (laughs) Well, what's the verdict, Herr Dr. Werner? The Herr Doctor will prescribe a stronger prescription for your eyeglasses. Well, isn't the prescription I'm wearing strong enough? Not quite, Tony. At your age, um, shall we say... Past 39. <laughs> past 39? Huh? What about for a man who's just past 59? A little stronger still. Uh, Fritz, if they'll help cut down on these headaches, it'll certainly be worth the trouble. Yeah, the new glasses may help. May? We can never be sure about these things. We must always hope. You know something, Tony? What? Sometimes I think your headaches could be, how do you say, uh, triggered by something not altogether physical. Oh, come on, Fritz. What's that supposed to mean? How old is your wife? Now, you know perfectly well how old Martha is. Thirty. Almost on the nose. But what's Martha's age got to do with... Tony, she's half your age. Charming, intelligent, beautiful. Black hair, green eyes. The figure of a goddess. The face of an angel. Yes, one of the most gorgeous young women you've ever seen, right? Exactly. Could it not be possible that there is a certain tenseness in your relationship with this beautiful young wife? That causes the headaches? Oh, no, Fritz, I don't think so. I've seen you both at a dinner party. How you react whenever a younger man seems to be paying the slightest attention to her. Martha loves you. Loves you deeply. You have no cause in the world to be jealous of her. I promise you. So relax. Enjoy her. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. (laughs) Fritz, what you're prescribing is exactly what I have in mind. That's good. Good. Uh, You know that Martha left a week ago for that vacation we've been talking about. A little hidden away island in the Caribbean. Well, I am joining her. You're joining her? Oh, that's perfectly wonderful. Yes, it's going to be like a surprise. She's not expecting me for another few days. You shouldn't do that, Tony. Well, who says so? Why do you surprise her? Can't you wire her or phone? Uh, No way. There's no direct phone to the island. And by the time a wire got there... What about the new glasses? Well, I've lived this long with the old ones. I can live a few more days with them. Uh, Here's the address of the island. It's the Hotel Paraiso. Uh, Send them Air Express. They should be there in two or three days. Whatever you say, Tony. Auf Wiedersehen, Fritz. And thanks for the advice. Uh, Not at all. And don't forget the glasses. Of course not. See you in about ten days. Miss Elliot, please take this letter to Mrs. Martha Bridges, Hotel Paraiso, Isla de los Perdidos. I'll give you the exact address later. Send it airmail, special delivery. Mark it uh, urgent. Ready? Dearest Martha, when you get this letter... Tony will already have surprised you. I did my best to think of a way to keep him from coming without arising any suspicions. No luck. Under the present circumstances, it would be best for you to take every possible precaution. You cannot be too careful, dear Martha. At one o'clock the following morning... I was in the lobby of the Hotel Paraiso on the little island of Los Perdidos, the island of the lost. Behind the desk, his feet on the desk, was a bald, fat little man, fast asleep. Oh, uh, excuse me. Maybe this will work. Yeah, I love it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, please to forgive me, senor. It's all right. I was just taking a few weeks of sleep. It's my fault. It is a little late. One in the morning, your time. Oh, the hour is of no importance, senor. 
Welcome to the Hotel Paraiso. I am at your service. Uh, my wife arrived last Tuesday ah, and she doesn't... Of course, senor. Pablo understands. Your wife arrived last Tuesday. Yes, and your Pablo. Always at your orders, senor. Your lady, this good senora, is expecting you. You will find her in the... <laughs> Bungalow B. <laughs> she is our very best. Expecting me? She doesn't even know you that... must not keep her waiting, yes, you know. I mean, this is a surprise. She doesn't even know that I'm coming. Are you sure, Pablo? Oh, I am sure, senor. Uh, well, you didn't even ask me my name. I know, senor. Eh? <laughs> you follow me now to Bongoro B. See? This is our Bongoro B. Enter, senor. Uh, you can put my bag over there near the coffee table. Now, this naturally is the living room. The bedroom is through that door. Uh, just a moment. I want to see. Uh, we must be quiet. It's dark, but... Yes, that's Martha all right in there. And she's in bed sound asleep. Well, as you yourself have said, senor, it is a little late. But I, I, I just can't understand it. Ah, don't try, senor. Meantime... Try to make yourself comfortable. Admire, if you will, the beauty of this bungalow. Uh, yes, it's very nice. As you can see, all the furniture is what you call uh, uh, rattan. Oh, beautifully handmade by the artistic makers of furniture of the island. And uh, please, please do notice the draperies, senor. Yes, they're very pretty. Fishing nets woven by the fishermen of the island and made into most unique decorative kinds. But how could she have been expecting me? I wasn't supposed to... Have in the morning, senor, when you awaken, you will see a view from the bedroom window as you have never seen before in all your life. Are you sure that she... Oh, I am quite sure. Bangor B is situated on a most high cliff Looking down 2,000 feet into our beautiful sea and the rocks below. Yes, yes, of course. I look forward to seeing it. In the morning, senor. And now, senor. Pleasant dreams. Until tomorrow. <laughs> what was he talking about? Martha couldn't possibly have been expecting me. Not for another three days. It'll all get clear up in the morning. Oh, I better get undressed, get a little sleep, and my little gift for Martha. <laughs> my anniversary present. Beautiful string of pearls, perfectly matched. Oh, wonderful luster. Well, I'll keep till morning. I'll put them around her beautiful neck as I wake her. Oh, Lord, I'm tired. Well, lights out, Tony. I feel as if I hadn't slept in... in... No. No, not again. Not here of all places. Oh, that pain is coming again. It's spreading down the whole side of my face. It's hard to breathe. It is me, my darling. Alberto. <laughs> I'm sorry to be late. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. What are you doing here? Uh, I, I, I apologize, sir. M a frightful mistake. I, I thought this was Bungalow B. This is Bungalow B, young man, and I'm afraid that you've made a very great mistake. If this is Bungalow B, uh, I have made no mistake. Who do you think you're looking for? I cannot see, senor, but uh, <laughs> this can not be any of your business. Shh, please, keep your voice down. My wife is in there asleep. Your wife? <laughs> this is beginning to be most amusing. The, that beautiful young woman is the wife of an old rooster like you? <laughs> this, this is very funny. Your wife... Listen, you better leave. You've come to the wrong place. And perhaps it is you who have made the mistake. The American girl told me you that... You get out of here fast before I kill you. So, the old man has a gun, too. Yes, and it is loaded. Out. As you say, senor, uh, she is all yours, old man. Good night and...
good luck. As the door slammed shut, something exploded inside me. I knew that these last few months of doubt, fear, suspicion about Martha were based on something more than fantasy. This young man was evidence of it. Clear and tangible proof. I hadn't been expected for a few days, and Pablo had mistaken me for this young man. My brain began to pound like a trip hammer. I no longer trusted myself to be in the same room with Martha if I stayed. At that moment, I looked down at my hands. The string of pearls was still in them. I tore them apart furiously and watched as they rolled to the floor. All night long, I wandered as though drugged up and down the long miles of beach, ghostly white in the moonlight. In the morning, weary and numb, I found my way back to the lobby of the hotel. Tony! Darling! No, it, it can't be! When did you get here? Last night's plane, connecting boats. Oh, darling, why didn't you let me know you were coming? Well, I had a crazy idea, Martha. I wanted to surprise well, you. Well, you certainly have. Why didn't you come to the bungalow? Oh, I did, Martha. Oh, Tony, I would have heard you. I came in very quietly. Is anything wrong? Are you all right, sweetheart? Oh, yes, I'm just dandy. Where did you sleep last night? I didn't. I walked along the beach after I left the bungalow. Oh, why should you have done a silly thing? Martha, like... what have you been up to since you got here? Oh, Tony, dear. Now stop it. I won't be cross-examined. You know very well. Who that... was that young man, Martha? What are you talking about? What young man? The young man who came calling on you in the middle of the night. He said he had an appointment. Oh, I haven't the remotest idea what you're talking about. I'm leaving on the next boat. It goes at four o'clock. Tony, could we go over to the bungalow, please? We can't talk here in the lobby. All right. Whatever you like, Martha. We got to put the key... Oh, here it is. Martha? What is it? What's wrong? Uh, Martha, uh, you've made a mistake. Mistake? The furniture. The furniture. It's all different from what it was last night. I don't understand you, Tony. The draperies. They were made of fish netting. These are, what do you call them, matchstick bamboo. Martha, what's the letter on this bungalow? It's bungalow B, of course. This isn't the bungalow where you slept last night? Of course it is. Now, let's take a look at the bedroom. Oh, no. No, it can't be. You were sleeping in a, in a double-sized bed. King size, in fact. And, and this room has two twin beds. Oh, wait. I know the view. Pablo said that the view from this bedroom window was something that I... I... What is wrong, Tony? Well, he said that... He said that there was a beautiful view of the sea and the rocks below the cliff and, and palm trees. Martha, Martha, what do you see out of this window? Nothing but the side wall of the bungalow next to us. Then where is the beautiful view? Unless, for some reason, Pablo lied to me. When the tree that has stood in the forest for a thousand years topples and falls crashing to the ground, is there a sound if there are no ears to hear it? Do the brilliant colors of the rainbow exist for someone who has never had the blessed gift of eyes and eyesight? These are questions for which there are no easy answers. Just what similarly disturbing questions are there for Tony Bridges? Questions to which he has not yet found the answer. We'll find out shortly when I return with Act Two. If you take a look at the new 1975 cars, it doesn't take long to notice the European influence is strong. And to be sure, there are some new American cars that rival the Europeans, one being Buick's new Skylark SR. But don't consider a Skylark SR because of its touring car interior or its rather rakish profile. Consider it because it's a Buick, possessing many of Buick's nicer innovations, like the new Buick V6, a peppery little engine that spits out a plentiful amount of torque, 
while sipping a surprisingly small amount of gasoline. And if you wish, Skylark SR can abound with creature comforts seldom found on cars this size, with available items like Cruise Master Speed Control, AM FM Stereo. But you've heard enough. Now you need to see and drive a Skylark SR. And try to remember, it's not a European touring car. It's a Buick. Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. If Thanksgiving dinner's at your house this year, you want that meal to be perfect. Frank Lieber here to tell you the True Value hardware stores can help with their big line of kitchen helpers to make your dinner a success. Like Taylor's roast meat thermometer to let you know when the turkey's cooked so it won't overcook. Has a preset indicator and an easy-to-read dial. It's just three ninety eight. Then there's West Bend's Pantry Arts cookware set. The tough white ceramic interior won't pit, peel, or scrape off, yet it cleans easily. The nostalgic silhouettes add color to your kitchen. The seven-piece set, two covered saucepans, plus a Dutch oven and ten-inch skillet, the chair lid, just twenty four eighty eight. True Value hardware stores have Nordic's buffet-sized sizzler server, too. The aluminum platter holds a 20-pound birder roast. The insulated bake-like holder complements any table setting. It's just nine eighty-eight. You'll find these kitchen helpers and more at participating True Value hardware stores. the events for Tony Bridges of the night just past, the tree falling in the forest unheard, or colors never seen, what was the logical explanation? For Tony, what had happened was all a little strange and curious. Martha and I talked all morning. She finally convinced me that everything that had happened last night was, in fact, a series of reasonable coincidences that spelled out mistake. For the first time in months, I felt as close to Martha as I ever had, and I knew she felt the same way about me. We went for a walk into the mountains that rose behind the hotel. On the way back, just as we were nearly at the bungalow, Martha lost her footing, turned her ankle badly. I carried her into the bedroom. She rested while I unpacked and ordered dinner in our rooms. So... With your permission, senor, a beautiful dinner has been prepared for you and the senora. Look here. This fish was swimming happily in the sea only half an hour ago. And one hour ago, these beautiful vegetables were growing proudly in our own garden. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Pablo. It all looked beautiful indeed. I, I placed the dinner here. On the table. Thank you. And, Senora, I hope you do not suffer too much pain. No, it only hurts if I try to move it or put weight on it. Uh, you just stay where you are for a day or two and it'll be fine, I'm sure. It is essential that one exercise care when walking in our beautiful mountains. From the time when there were earthquakes here, there are some cracks where one can trip and uh, twist an ankle. Oh, really? This is uh, earthquake country. I, I didn't know that. Senor. Was. Not in any more than 40 years. <laughs> now, there. Your dinner is served. I leave you to the enjoyment of it with as much as for you both, Senor. Senora. Well, let me get these few things away in the closet and then we'll have our so beautiful dinner. <laughs> Do you have the key, dear? What key? Uh, to this second closet. It's locked. Oh, I forgot. There isn't any key. Pablo said the last guest took it with him. There's no master key, so he's ordered a duplicate from the mainland. Oh, well, I'll put my stuff in your closet then, all right? And the key should be here by tomorrow or the next day. Oh, that's so. great. And now, if the senora will permit that she be <laughs> carried from her bed to this most appetizing dinner... The senora has the senora's <laughs> permission. <laughs> Up we go. Oh. Ah, there we are. Ah. Ah. Couldn't be happier. That's a stupid ankle. Uh, buen appetito, my darling. Uh, to us. To us. In the middle of the night, I was wakened by the most curious sensation. My bed 
was being shaken violently. All around me, I had the feeling of the furniture. The pictures on the wall were vibrating in some strange way. The whole bungalow was quivering. Martha. Martha, are you all right? Martha, are you awake? Where's that light? Oh, there. Martha. Her bed was empty. Martha, where are you? Where could she be? Then I suddenly remembered her ankle. How could she have left her bed? Where could she have gone? What had Pablo said about this once having been earthquake country? Of course. That's what was happening. At your service, Senor Reyes. Uh, we're in the middle of an earthquake, aren't we? Earthquake? There is no earthquake, Senor. But of course there is. What are we supposed to do? Do, Senor? Oh, look, will you stop beating about the bush? Just tell me that it's nothing serious or that it'll pass without damage. But don't tell me that it's nothing. Would you please to tell me why the Senor thinks there is an earthquake? The pictures, my bed, the lamp, the whole room is shaking and jumping around at, at that noise, that rumbling noise. The Senor, you why she is. Well, that's just it. It's really why I called. My wife is not here. Oh, I am so sorry to hear she is not there. Have you seen her? I regret, Senor Graham. I have not. But, but where could she have gone? She can't walk. Of this, I have no knowledge, Senor. No, wait a minute. Wait, a, wait just a moment. The, the, the sound seems to have stopped. And nothing's shaking anymore. Is it all over? I think perhaps I can explain. The strenuous climb you have made this afternoon in the mountains, the kindness of the altitude and the thinness of the air, you are not used to it. It happens to many of our guests. What happens? It is a kind of a, a spasm of the muscles, senor, from the altitude. I'm so happy it has passed. But, but my wife, where is my wife? immediately. A long and merciful sleep. When I awoke, it was broad daylight. The sun was streaming in through the windows, and everything was exactly as it had been in the middle of the night, except for one thing. Lying in the next bed, reading calmly, was Martha. Good morning, sweetheart. Did you have a good night? I slept like a rock. Where were you last night? I let go of my arm. You heard Where me. were you? Where did you go? What are you talking about? Where were you? Let go. Get your hands away from my throat. I can't breathe. In the middle of the night, you left this bedroom. Now, where did you go? Are you out of your mind? Take a look at this angle of mine. It's purple and blue. It's twice the size it was last night. I can't walk on it except with the greatest pain. You asked me where I was last night. I was here. Right here, in this bed, every minute of the night. A couple of days passed. They were blessedly peaceful, uneventful, golden. Two days before our vacation was to end, Martha's ankle was strong enough for her to venture out on another little walk into the hills that ran along the edge of the cliff that overlooked the sea below. Oh, this cane's a great help. I really don't have to put my full weight on the ankle. Just watch your step. Avoid any of those cracks that Pablo pointed out. Look, darling, there's a clearing up ahead. We could rest for a bit when we get up there. Oh, listen to those birds. <laughs> yes, the whole thing is like a garden of Eden. You know, Pablo said if we follow this path, we'll discover thousands and thousands of wild orchids. Oh, we should have come here long ago. It's so much more fun than going to those silly luncheons. For the first time in months, again. I began to feel Good sure of myself. Going. Sure of Martha. In spite of all my fears, I knew she loved me. I had no reason for being jealous of her. Not a single reason. As she spoke, I began to hear a strange sound. Like the flapping of a thousand wings coming nearer 
and nearer. Oh, look! The sky is black with them. Birds. Huge birds. Martha, what are they? They're all pink and red. I think they're flamingos. I've never seen so many birds in my life. They're coming closer and closer. We can't get frightened. What shall we do? I don't know. Martha, use your cane. If they come close, use it like a baseball bat. Oh, here's a branch from the tree. I'll do the same. You can't tell me. Here they come. Look, Look there's one. Out. That big one. Oh, that big one just knocked off my glasses. I can't see. Don't think I can fight them. There's too many of them. Keep at it, darling. Sooner or later. Oh. Where did they go? They? The flamingos. The birds. They they disappeared as suddenly as they came. Are you all right? I'm fine. I I can't imagine. Oh, I need a cigarette. Can you take one of mine? They're in my bag. Uh, I can't see very well. I lost my glasses when those birds... The bag. It's right mm-hmm. near your feet. But, oh, yes. Yes, I've got it. Oh, there's so much junk in your bag. I... What's that? What is it? Listen. You hear it? What do you suppose it is? Martha, you you do hear it, don't you? I... I think so. In the distance, those... Those drums beating. Well, of course. Of course I hear them, dear. Oh, thank heavens. I thought for a moment... Where do you suppose they come from? Who's playing them? But I haven't the slightest idea. It's funny. <laughs> Not for that cigarette. Down we go into the bottom of your bag and... And... Martha. Martha, what's this? That's the key to the closet in the bungalow. To your closet? Mm, to my closet and your closet. It's to both closets. Both? When did it get here? <laughs> Always been here. Why? When I asked you about it the other night, you said there was no key to my closet. Somebody had taken it away and they were making a new one. I said that? Of course you did. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's all starting to make sense. That anyone could be so evil. That anyone could so despise another human being that she'd stop at nothing. Stoop to do anything to get him out of the way. You don't know what you're saying. I love you, Tony. You must believe oh, anything me. at all. Even to the point of trying to drive a man out of his mind. It's not true. All these strange things that have been happening. Oh, they were no coincidences. They were all part of some twisted, devilish scheme you worked out to get rid of me by driving me mad. Careful, Tony. You're, you're backing me so close to the edge of the cliff. The mix-up with the bungalows. Oh, that was a good one. How did you work that? And the business of your ankle and disappearing in the middle of the night. That was worthy of a master. Stop it, Tony! And the birds, huh? And now this key. Oh, you missed your calling, Martha. You should get an act together. Martha, the mysterious magician. She mystifies. She confuses. The hand is quicker than the eye. She cheats. She lies. But it's all part of the act, isn't it, Martha? Isn't it? Careful, Tony. I'm losing my balance. Tony, I'm... Ah! Long... Two thousand feet. And those sharp rocks down there can't be very comfortable, can they? The act is over, Martha. Kurt, Martha. Jealousy is said to be the child of love. But if the parent does not do his best to strangle the child, the child will not rest till it has poisoned its own father, which may well be the case with Tony Bridges. To what further extremes will the deadly venom of his jealousy drive Tony? He may or may not know the answer, but we shall when we return shortly with Act Three. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablets? No, sinus medicine. Sinus tablets. Help the headache on the pressure. Oh, you mean sign off. Exactly. Headache pain is one thing. A sinus headache is something else. Sometimes your whole face can seem to throb with pain. You want relief. Take Sinoff tablets. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. The sinus medicine that gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a sinus drainer. Sinoff. 
the sinus medicine that helps relieve sinus pain while you drain. And Sinoff doesn't stop there. Have you tried Sinoff Sinus Spray, the fastest known form of sinus congestion relief? It works in seconds. That's Sinoff Sinus Spray. When sinus flares up, use Sinoff Tablets and Spray only as directed. S I N E O F F. Sinoff. Exactly. Sinoff, the sinus medicines in the bright red box. America, you've certainly got a lot of choices when it comes to economy cars. We sure do. However, if you want the American-built four-cylinder economy car that carries the lowest manufacturer's suggested retail price of any American-built four-cylinder economy car, you've only got one choice. That makes sense. The 1975 Chevy Vega Notchback. Vega Notchback. That's right. At $27.99, Vega Notchback carries the lowest manufacturer's suggested retail price of any American-built four-cylinder economy car. Not bad. Of course, that price doesn't include destination charges, state and local taxes. But it does include front disc brakes, cut pile carpeting, front bucket seats, and room for four. That's more like it. It sure is. Vega Notchback by Chevrolet. The only American-built four-cylinder car to choose if you want the one with the lowest manufacturer's suggested retail price. It sure is. A glorious feeling of exhilaration flowed through Tony. His head was as light as if he'd drunk too much champagne. For the first time in years, he no longer had a heavy millstone around his neck. The torment of having a beautiful young woman for a wife. Tony Bridges' only concern now was to find some way to get off the island before Martha's body was discovered. The same drums I'd heard just before Martha. I started walking slowly, deliberately, in the direction from which they seemed to come. Without my glasses, I could just barely see where I was going. I tore my way through a tangle of creeping vines and found myself in some sort of a clearing. I almost stumbled over something seated before a small fire. It was an ancient little man of the island, his face like so much black parchment, his clothes in rags. He sat there, hunched over the smoky fire, blinking his eyes and mumbling. I... I beg your pardon. Oh. Uh, it is all my fault. I should not sit in the middle of the bath. But it is a good place to meditate. Who are you? What's your name, old man? He's long forgotten my name. Even by me. What are you doing here? Sitting, listening, thinking. Listening? To the sad and mournful song of my people. Oh, you mean those drums? You hear them too? Alas, I hear them too well. I hear them. What are they for? Where does the sound come from? Our island is small. They come from everywhere. They are heard everywhere. But why? Why? What do they mean? This what who hear is lamentation. Death has walked among my people. Among the lost one. It is why this place is called Islarilos Perdidos. Island of the lost. Someone has died? Someone has passed on to Marco. Who is Marco? The great father of all things in the sea, from where we all have come to where we all shall go. I see. This is reason for the wailing of the drums. They beat out their farewell to the soul of a man who is making the journey to Marco. The soul of a man or a woman? Man. Always man. Not woman. For woman, drums play another song. Not this one. I understand. I'm very sorry for the poor man who has, who has gone on to Marco. Uh, when did he die? No one can be sure. Perhaps... He is not yet dead. Well, then why... The drums often sing with the promise of things to come. 
to some soul. Sometimes the spirit of a man will die before he does. Then, Mark, who is his special sad because he is made to wait when that happened, the melody of the drums is his special sad too. Like now. <laughs> I left my ancient friend as quickly as possible, made my way back to the hotel. I couldn't stop thinking of all the confusing things that had happened since I arrived on this cursed island. The mix-up with the bungalows, the visitor that first night, the missing closet key, what I thought was an earthquake, Martha's apparent disappearance in the middle of the night in spite of her bad ankle, the attack by the flamingos, and finally, my realization that Martha, in some way, has made all these things happen to drive me out of my mind. But hold on there. Has made things happen? Huh. Made things happen. Martha is dead. Her body at this very moment is being battered against the sharp rocks by the angry waters of that beautiful blue sea. Uh, senor! Senor Bridges! I have been looking for you all over. What do you want? Uh, most especially, I have been looking for the senora, your wife. What is it? Uh, for you, senor, this small package has had I by this morning's boat. Oh, uh, thank you, Papa. And for the senora, this letter, here made, very special delivery. He's my most... Uh, yes, yes, I'll take it. You will be sure, senor, it reaches the cans of the senora. He's also marked very personal. Don't worry. <laughs> thank you, senor. I walked over to Bungalow B. Once inside, I collapsed into the big chair, feeling as though my lifeblood had been drained from me. I opened the package, addressed to me. <laughs> Good old Fritz. My glasses. I put them on, and things came into focus once again. Then I tore open the letter addressed to Mom. Very especial delivery, most urgent, very personal. As I read, my hands began to shake, my head to ache. Dear Martha, when you get this letter, Tony will already have surprised you. I did my best to think of a way to keep him from coming without arousing any suspicions. No luck. Under the present circumstances, best for you to take every possible precaution. You cannot be too careful, dear mother. My last examination of Tony showed unmistakable symptoms. In the simplest language, of deterioration of the brain tissues, the symptoms point clearly to a situation where Tony's sanity hangs by a very thin thread. At any given moment, that thread may snap. If it does, the first manifestations will be an attack of dizziness, accompanied by a buzzing in the ears and the blurring of the vision. There are also indications of things that follow the classic pattern, that there will be a series of hallucinations. Hallucinations. He will think he sees and hears things he actually does not see or hear. He will think he has done things he has not actually done. Huh? Hallucinations. Then none of these things ever really happened. And Martha's alive. She's alive. Like everything else, I imagined that too. I imagined that I killed her. <laughs> Si, pronto. Pablo, Pablo, have you seen the senora? Un momentito, par favor. I have not seen your wife since she left with you, senor. But you, you, you don't understand, Pablo. Everything is... Will you please to have a seat for one small moment, senor Bridges, until I complete this telephone call? Your pardon. <laughs> Uh, you see, Pablo, I'm not exactly well. And I had the foolish idea that Martha, my wife, had, had fallen over the... That I had pushed her and that, that she... You understand? The guy who said... 
Ah, no, he's incredible. Esto seguro? I thought she might be dead, but now I know that that too is what we call a hallucination, something that you think... Say, Cayo, en los rocas. A pie de la cuevadra? Oh, yo lo diga. Gracias, jefe. Hasta pronto. Now, what was that all about, Pablo? I... Regretfully must inform you, senor, of some very bad news. What is it, Pablo? At the foot of the cliff, senor, just below the hotel, two fishermen have just discovered the body of the senora, your wife. The police will soon be here. Are you all right, senor, please? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm fine, Pablo. Did did I hear you uh, speaking on the phone a moment ago? The phone? Ah, si, senor. It was the contractor for the building of the annex to this hotel. And uh, you, you didn't tell me something about two fishermen, what they found at the bottom of the cliff? Not one word, senor, about any fishermen. You said nothing about my wife? Well, not, senor. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you, Pablo. I, I, I'll be in the bungalow. Was that phone conversation and what Pablo had told me about Martha's body being found at the foot of the cliff, was that, too, a hallucination? Along with my backing her off the cliff? What was real? What was imagined? Was Martha dead? Was she alive? I rushed back into the bungalow. I knew Martha would be there. Dear, sweet, wonderful, beautiful Martha... Martha? Martha, sweetheart, where are you, Martha? The bedroom? The bathroom? Oh, where on earth could she be? Yes. Excuse me, senor, but you have two visitors. I will accompany them to the bungalow. We will be there in a moment. She couldn't possibly have gone to... Oh, what's this? What have I got in my hand? Where did it come from? The key to my closet. I had it when I asked Martha for a cigarette. And she told me that... Uh, and it's been here in my hand all that time. Strange. I must open the closet now. I do have the key. And that's what keys are for. To open things. Isn't that right, Tony? You must to excuse us, senor. These are the police of the island. No, no. No, not just this minute, please. Not till I open the door to the closet. Now, we can't tell you. The maid, when she cleaned this morning, found the door to the closet open. So? No. No, it isn't for real. I'm only imagining this. It's my imagination, gentlemen. It's my imagination. <laughs> See, Senor Jefe, here in this closet, that is the body of his wife. He's strangled with this string of precious pearls. <laughs> The poet Longfellow wrote, The moon, from some dark gate of cloud, throws o'er the sea a floating bridge of light, across whose trembling planks our fancies crowd into the realm of mystery and night. So Tony Bridges, as he stands staring into the sea, watching the floating bridge of light cast by a full Caribbean moon, Tony knows at last the difference between the real and the imaginary. Or does he? I'll be back shortly. Some people think we play ping pong all day. They're wrong. The USO isn't all fun and games. Today, the USO has millions of problems like this one in Germany. My family's going crazy living in a tiny apartment. Where can we live? Today's USO has millions of problems, like this one in Asia. I'm hooked on drugs. Where can I get help? Or this problem in Athens. Our marriage is breaking up. Can you help us? Today's USO has little time for ping pong. We've got serious work to do. 
We've got lots of new problems here and overseas. The problems are big. How big? Well, if someone asks you, who needs the USO? Tell them, we do, we do. Over 5 million American military personnel and their families need today's USO. And because we get no government funds, we need all your support. Please give to USO through the United Way or local USO campaign. We trust you've enjoyed our little exercise in Now You See It, Now You Don't. Or to put it another way, a string of precious pearls should never be used for anything other than show. But that's something everybody knows, isn't it? Our cast included Norman Rose, Marion Seldes, Bob Caliban, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It will destroy the whole world. Simon, it's not good for you. The world, it's lost unless there is a new 36th man. Take my place. You must do it quickly. Quickly before I don't, don't, don't get up. Don't try to get up, please. Say yes, Harry. Say yes. And suddenly there is an end to thunder and lightning, the wind. Suddenly, every cloud will disappear. A bright sun will shine in a peaceful heaven. Just rest. I try to... Say yes. Only you can save the world. Say yes. Me? Me save the world? Yes, oh. you. Only you can save the world. Harry. Harry, say yes. Harry. Yes, yes. All right, yes. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>